Okay, so today we are going to be talking about how to set up a file that you made in Autodesk Inventor 2018 and put it into Autodesk Fusion 360 and set it up for machining on a CNC router. Okay, so this is the file I made. It is a box or a cabinet. Um, it it's just has the, these um, sort of mortise and tenon type joints that we have and we'll pin together and then we'll put screws in it. Um, and the students are going to be machining these on the CNC mill. So right now I saved it as sidewall A final two, and this is saved within the cabinet storage box folder. Okay, so I saved it there. And now I'm going to go into um, Autodesk Fusion. Okay, and this is Autodesk Fusion. Okay, and I can just open up a new file here. And I do that by going up to this nine or three by three or nine box pane panel thing here, the top left corner. And I'm going to choose which file I want. So if I was to choose this in the folder, I would go to the folder that's on my computer, wherever it is. And I'd choose the file. I'd hit open. Okay. For me, I already have it in here uh, just to save time. And I would hit upload, and it would upload. And then your file would, file would appear in this left-hand menu. So I'm going to double-click on the file I want to work on, which is sidewall final two, okay? And I'm going to set up a new um, CNC file or CAM file to machine on the CNC router. So I'm going to come up here where it usually says sculpt, and that you can actually make stuff within Autodesk Fusion. I've done a little bit of work doing that, but honestly, I, I still like the inventor environment still used to that and eventually we'll make some videos on how to do that in Autodesk Fusion but right now we just care about the cam stuff so I'm going to go down to cam um, and I'm going to just set my units to an inch right away okay we want everything to be in inches because that's what we made our file in inches um, and then we're going to come up here where it says setup and hit the drop down bar and hit new setup okay and first thing I need to do is set the orientation of the origin, okay? So first thing it did, it wanted to do the z-axis. So I chose the, the top plane here, okay? That's my z-axis. And then the x-axis, I'm hitting shift and the scroll wheel and rotating around. And I'm going to hit this right face as my X axes, okay? And now if I hit the home button here, it goes back into isometric mode and I'm going to hit model box point, okay? And there is our origin set, okay? Now, Autodesk Fusion 360 uh, sets the file up so it has extra material on the tops and the sides and stuff. I don't want that. So I'm going to come over here to the stock tab and hit stock offset mode and the drop down menu and hit no additional stock. Okay, so this is exactly exactly half an inch, which is exactly what the the diamond or excuse me, the thickness of the material is. And I'm going to hit OK. Okay, so there's our first part done. Now I'm going to come up here where it says 2D, hit the drop down map bar and hit bore okay and i'm going to first set up what tool i want to be using so i'm going to come in here and i'm going to select tool and hit add new tool and i'm going to choose a flat end mill that is moving at 0.25 of an inch or excuse me it is a diameter 0.25 of an inch Okay, and now as, if you look behind my menu here, this mill bit came in and is floating in midair. And I'm going to set the cutting feed rate to 90 inches per minute. It's a little quick, but we're going through HDPE, so it should move pretty easily through that. 
And now I'm going to go to geometry. And this is where I'm going to select where I want to cut. So I'm going to select all the bore holes, OK? Not the ones on the side here, because that will be cut out with the contour path that we make. Um, but these are all going to be the bore holes. So next, I'm going to hit tool orientation, select top face as my z-axis, and I'm going to select the right face as my x-axis, and then I'm going to select model box point for the origin, which is right there. Okay, and now I'm going to go to the heights tab. Okay, and this is going to set my heights at from which the tool references okay so my first height is a retract height and that's how much a tool comes out each time it finishes a, a cut the clearance is how high the tool moves at uh, when it's going across the whole piece when it's starting the top height i'm going to choose selection right here and select the top face of my part and then the bottom height i'm going to choose selection but I'm going to choose the bottom edge of one of my boreholes, and that ensures everything's in the right place. Now I'm going to go to the Passes tab and hit Multiple Passes, okay? And we should be all set for this one. Um, actually, I am going to come in here into the Linking tab, and for the horizontal lead in and out, I'm going to put in 0.01, and that just changed everything, and that's what I want. Okay. So now I am going to. Well, this is finished now because you you can actually um, see that it's finished because it has the tool right here and everything's notated where it's going to be. And now I'm going to make my pocket down here. Okay. You always want to do the features within the part first, and then you cut out your contours. Because if you cut out your contour first, then you have this part that may fly around and bounce all over the place, and that's no good. So I am going to go up to 2D again and choose 2D Pocket. Okay? I don't need to choose my tool this time because it's already been selected. Again, I don't have to change the cutting feed rate because it's been notated, but I do need to select my geometry because I'm doing this inner face right here. Okay, that's the face I want to cut to. Okay, I need to also set my origin and my orientation. I have to do this each time. So again, I'm going to choose the top face and I'm going to choose the X right face for the X axis. I'm going to hit the little home button to get into isometric. Then I'm going to just choose where the origin is, which is going to be this top corner right here. See that? So now I'm going to set my heights. Okay. Again, the retract height's the same. Retract height is the same. Clearance height's the same. Um, what's going to be different here now is the top height. Well, that will be the same. Okay. And the top height, I'm going to go to Selection. I'm going to choose the, the top height that's referenced. And then I'm going to go to Selection for the bottom height. And that's going to be the bottom face of the part that I'm making. OK. And now that's good. I'm going to go into my Passes menu and hit Multiple Passes. OK. And now I'm going to go into my linking menu, and I'm going to put each one of these at point zero one two five. Point zero one two five, and then down here where it says maximum ramp step down, I'm going to bring that down to point two five. Okay. Now I'm going to hit OK. Oh, we made a wrong selection here. Um, that's because it's supposed to be on retract height. You want this one to be retract, stock top, then top height for all my clearance heights. It's good that happened though, so you know what to do if that happens to you. So there is our pocket made, and now we have to set, make the contour, okay? 
Don't have to change feeds and speeds nor the tool because that's been selected before. And now what I'm going to do is choose the geometry. It's going to be this outer edge right here. Okay, that's my, where I'm going to be cutting. I'm going to be doing something different here. I'm going to be adding tabs so this piece stays firmly in place. You could do it by distance. That's a little annoying because you got to calculate stuff and who likes to calculate things all the time. So we're going to go to at points. Okay, and I'm going to just choose three points here. One point on the side. Three points on this face. And one point on the side. And you notice I'm choosing the bottom edge of the piece. Okay, and again, I know it's tedious, but we got to go set, select where our origin is facing. So top face is the Z axis, right face is the X axis, and then the model box point is where the origin is going to be each time we have to do that. Okay, now we are going to set the top height to selection, choose the top face. Select the bottom height to selection, and that's going to be the bottom edge down here. This bottom edge right here, that's going to be where our tool references to cut. Okay, again, we're going to do multiple passes because we don't want to cut this all at the same time. And then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to change these to 0 0.0125. 0 0.0125, 0 0.0125, and that's all set. And I'm going to hit OK. And if you look here, it shows you it loading. And hey, look at that. There's our draw, our part actually made. And if we want to check it, we can go hit this tool right here called the Simulate tool. And we can just hit, I'm going to do the whole part because that, is what you would do in real life. Oh, so there's our the whole part right there. All the part cuts should be visible. And now I'm going to just hit play. And now you can watch the tool just do its thing and beep, 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 all the way around. Okay, we could sit here and watch it, but we're not going to do that. So now the final thing is is go to setup. Right click on setup hit post process. I'm going to turn, determine which folder I'm going to save this. Um, I'm going to just save it on um, in the folder that these are all saved in, okay? Which is in the OneDrive for me. And I'm going to just hit save or I open and that's a folder it's going to save it. This is going to be sidewall, a final two, because that's what I named the file before. I need to make sure that this is under mock 3 milcps okay, because that's the type of mill we're going to be using. Not, but you, if you have a different mill, of course, you got to change it to that. And we're going to hit post, okay, and hit save. And there we go. Now it's going to bring up this thing called brackets, and I can view the G code. And this is the code that tells the machine where to go exactly for each line throughout the whole process of cutting this. So if you come down all the way here, it's going to show you that there are 2,139 2, lines of code to get this piece done. Okay? So now you have to go over to the CNC machine, and that will be the next video on how to set up the CNC router for machining a part.